Thank you for uh, coming out on a Sunday morning to uh, join me in talking about something that I love, but also at the same time find a little embarrassing. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, actually, uh, so how many of you here sort of have an idea what I'm going to be talking about? Uh, if you can raise your hand. Okay, so, so I'm, I'm really going to be preaching mostly to the choir. Uh, I actually have two versions of the presentation. Uh, one which I call the 18 plus version, and the other one which I call the 13 <laughs> version. So uh, right now the default version is the 18 plus version. Is that okay with you guys? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. So let's uh, let's get this started then. Um, so I'm Andrew Yoon. Um, I'm a former uh, writer at Joystick uh, and. Uh, former editor-in-chief at Shack News, and uh, right now I'm just a dude, so that's, that's my Twitter profile, just a dude. Uh, a dude that happens to love boys' love, so, uh, so let's get started. Uh, so, yeah, uh, this presentation features porn, okay? It, it will have porn, so <laughs> I'm really trying to make it clear that if you don't want to see animated very, I'm very, being very specific here, very animated boys touching each other, you really should leave right now. Uh, in, in my alternate version of the presentation, it just says, um, let's see, notice. <laughs> so, uh, so. All right, so uh, I thought this would be a really great way of um, starting the presentation. Uh, it'll just sort of give you an idea what to expect. So, unfortunately, the sound is coming from my laptop, so... explain all of this soon. <laughs> I don't know, what was that white spray? Not sure, <laughs> not sure. What you just saw was the opening movie of uh, Miracle Noten, uh, which is a boys' love game. Um, it's actually Miracle Noten 2, so that's the, that's the sequel. You might have lost some important plot elements by watching, <laughs> uh, watching this. I, I, I apologize if there were spoilers. Uh, uh, so yeah, Miracle Noten. Um, this is uh, essentially the summary that I found uh, written on a game review site. Ogata Akira finds a magical living notebook that can grant any wish he writes in it. But there's a catch. <laughs> Only horny wishes work. <laughs> so begins Akira's days of homoerotic wish writing. Um, the, way, the way I joke about it is, are, are you guys familiar with a death note? <laughs> it's, it's, it's gay death note, which, uh, which by the way is a thing. So. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, uh, Miracle Noten, uh, it's, it's actually a, a PC Otome game, uh, uh, and it features guys doing all sorts of raunchy things, but it's also an audio CD, it's posters, it's pillows, it's all sorts of merchandise. There's actually a really thriving community around this brand uh, and this genre of game. So 
Uh, I think we have to start by defining, well, what is boys' love? Uh, it's commonly referred to as yaoi uh, in both Japan and, and here in the US. And so uh, I remember uh, looking at this Penny Arcade uh, strip many, many years ago uh, about, about yaoi. Uh, and so essentially, uh, uh, Game and Taiko are talking, and they're like, yeah, you should check out this yaoi. You're really going to like it. Uh, and obviously, back in the day, people didn't, know, people didn't know what that was. He checked it out, and there, there you go. Um, actually, I think that's the strip that introduced me to yaoi, actually. I was like, what? Why is he so angry? And then I typed it in uh, to Google, and, and then uh, that's, that's sort of how it began. <laughs> Thank you, Google Image Search. Um, <laughs> So boys love yaoi. Uh, it's a Japanese genre of fictional media focusing on homoerotic romance uh, or sexual relationships between male characters. And the twist is that it's usually aimed at a female audience, uh, and it's usually created by female authors. Uh, so uh, yaoi con, which is actually coming to San Francisco uh, this September, uh, I'm really excited for that. Uh, it's actually 85% female by uh, last count, uh, and. In the U.S., about 25% of uh, readers are, are male. So it's a largely female uh, audience. Um, and so there's a reason for that. Uh, I'm going to go into a brief history. I know, it's, I know it's Sunday morning, so bear with me. There will be porn, so don't worry. Uh, <laughs> so female authors uh, writing for shoujo, so uh, t targeted towards girls, uh, these shoujo magazines, uh, they used to have platonic relationships between young boys. Uh, in the late 70s, uh, they started having like sexualized parodies of popular uh, anime and manga, so essentially slash fiction. Uh, so I'm sure you might know people that are slashing like Harry Potter characters. Uh, it, it, it's essentially the same idea. Uh, and then by the end of the 70s, uh, there were actually entire magazines devoted to uh, boys' love, and so. In the 90s, the term boys love BL, uh, for short, was invented. Uh, and yeah, here's um, an image of, of Gabe and Tycho. So, <laughs> uh, so yeah, uh, two things that, are, uh, that might be important to you uh, in this yaoi panel. Uh, so there's, there's usually a top or a bottom uh, in, in these games. And so the top is referred to the seme, and the bottom is referred uh, to as the uke. So, here, you know, if we want to go back, so who's the seme and uke here? You should think about that. <laughs> uh, so one question, so why do girls like yaoi, right? It's, uh, it's guys uh, having sex, and really, I, I, I really thought that there would be a lot more guys that would be into yaoi uh, because it's beautiful. Uh, but, uh, so actually, I went to Yahoo Answers, which is the premier source of answers on the internet. <laughs> And, uh, and these two were actually right next to each other, so I thought, I thought they were, it was just great to see them right next to each other. So the, so the first answer is, uh, you know, to many teenage girls, the conventional pairing of a girl and a boy, uh, it seems unrealistic, it, that it would never happen that way in real life. Yaoi and Shonen I, Boys Love, uh, offer a different view, almost a whole different world. When teenage girls read it, they don't feel like they need to compare it with their own circumstances. They can just enjoy the story in its purest form. It's just, it's love, you know, regardless of, of gender and boundaries. It's really beautiful, right? Uh, and then the ne next one, because uh, we like seeing hot guys, LOL. So. <laughs> and I think, I think those are two very valid responses for, <laughs> for why you might get into, into yaoi. Um, I'm, I'm definitely more of the latter, so. Uh, so actually, yaoi is a pretty, um, pretty big subgenre in anime. Uh, there's even uh, commercially available uh, uh, boys love products available in the US. So this is actually a trailer for Junjo Romantica, which is a, a pretty popular boys love anime series. That, that was also for the sequel, so I'm just, I'm just ruining all these series for you. I'm so, I'm so sorry. I really should have thought that through. Um, so. Yeah, so Junjo Romantica, uh, Misaki is struggling to prepare for his college entrance exam, so his brother arranges for a private tutor. 
but Misaki's nightmare is just beginning when his tutor Usami comes on to him. I'm pretty sure I've seen this porn before. <laughs> How will Misaki ever manage to pass his exam? And why does he feel so mysteriously drawn to Usami? Uh, probably because he's gorgeous. <laughs> but, uh, so this panel isn't only about Yaoi. Uh, this being Gamer X, uh, it has to be about games. So I, I sort of set up, OK, so Yaoi is a thing. Boys love is a thing. So what happens when you make it interactive, right? So the, uh, in Japan, there's a, a big genre of games called uh, otome, which is usually a story-based video game that's, once again, targeted towards females. Uh, and generally, the, the goal of the game is to develop a romantic relationship uh, at, with one of the many attractive males that you can choose from. Uh, so otome games aren't necessarily uh, about gay relationships. Uh, in fact, most of them you play a female and you're trying to uh, get a male suitor. Uh, and actually, uh, some of them are commercially available in the US as well. So this is a trailer for Haku Oki, Memories of the Shinsengumi, which is a really long title. So yeah, this specific game is available on Nintendo 3DS, but the franchise actually spans uh, a lot of different uh, games. Uh, I think there's there's PSP games, there's PS3 games. Uh, it it definitely it's actually it's been a pretty surprising success for Axis, uh, given that it seems like it would have a limited appeal, especially compared to some of the bigger budget games out there. Uh, so yeah, uh, the series is about Chizuru, a young woman who finds herself fighting alongside the infamous Shinsengumi as competing factions uh, war for control of Japan. It's you know pretty serious stuff. The M rating doesn't come from um, anything too naughty though, so it's really mostly uh, the violence of the of the war uh, that's happening. So don't get too excited. Don't you know you can you can you won't be able to. I was going to say, like, rush out to Blockbuster and rent it, but that's not a thing that people do anymore. And I, <laughs> and I guess I just dated myself. So there we go. Um, so, uh, so how do these games play? Um, if you're unfamiliar with uh, Otoma games, they're mostly, they're essentially choose-your-own-adventure games. Uh, they usually don't have that much animation. You'll just see uh, art and characters sort of t uh, talking to one another, and you'll make dialogue choices. You know maybe imagine The Walking Dead, but with less zombies and more sex. So, uh, so I, thought, I thought it would be fun if, as a group, we could sort of simulate play of one of these games. Would that be okay with you guys? Yeah. All right, okay, so uh, th this, this is a really abbreviated version. Uh, most of these games don't even run on a Mac, so I'm sorry about that. Uh, so we're gonna go through just a scenario and let's just, let's just see what happens. So, uh, for, the, for the sake of this panel, we're going to give you the choice between seducing either Ogata Koki, who's your brother, <laughs> <laughs> or Shimo Muraseji, who's your friend. Remember, th Miracle Noten, the premise of this game is that you stumble upon a magic notebook that lets you make horny wishes come true. So remember that. So your brother's perfectly fine, all right? Uh, all right, so by a show of hands, should we go after Ogata, your brother? Raise your hand. Okay. <laughs> All right. How about Shimomura Seiji? Okay. All right, people. People have decided. All right. Okay. Uh, why are people laughing? This is so serious. <laughs> Okay, so Shimamura Seiji, Akira's ch cheerful childhood friend, and has been in love with Akira ever since they first met. Akira goes to Seiji's place and finds himself getting beat up by his stepfather. Uh-oh, uh, that's not good. So what, what will you guys do? All right, so there's two options here. Should he charge in, punch the man, 
or should he just stand by and do nothing? If you think he should charge in, raise your hand. All right. I, I don't. I don't think. I, okay, fine. Uh, I don't. I don't think we have to ask about the. All right. I I, I put the black bar there for decency. Uh, um, I. I'm sorry, but you know, just it's it's still weird to me to show you guys like pixelated animated pe uh, penises. But maybe next time for the next con. Uh, so Akira saves Seiji and runs away with him. Seiji says they have to go back, but Akira refuses to let him go. Then Akira drops some aphrodisiac that he just happens to have. He just happens to have. <laughs> <laughs> and so the two have sex in the woods, uh, and Seiji confesses his love. All right. The, the plot is very deep in these games. Just, like, the writing is incredible. Um, so what should he do? Should he confess his love, or just say that they want to be friends? So. <laughs> we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna take a vote here. All right. I, I think there's a certain. All right, so should he confess his love? Raise your hands if you think he's... A, okay, all right, that's a, that's a pretty good, pretty good, good, good size. Or should they just stay friends? Oh, wow. All right, okay. All right. They're just going to stay friends. How could you do that to him? Because Seiji t continues to get beaten up by his stepfather, and Akira and Seiji no longer remain friends. Aww. The end. That's, yeah, look, that's your fault, all right? He picked a brother. So actually, I, I did put, I, I, that back arrow there does let us replay the game if you want to uh, try another scenario, or we can just continue on with the talk. I'll leave it up to you guys. <laughs> brother, brother. <laughs> all right, all right, okay. Okay, so let's. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I really thought that if I if this panel weren't long enough, we'd just keep on going back and and just see. I, I put a lot of effort into making this branching storyline. Also, that is actually how it plays in the game. Like this is abbreviated, but that is actually the story of Miracle. Okay, so Ogata Koki, your brother is Albert Einstein, Michael Phelps, and Mother Teresa rolled into one. The perfect human specimen, a genius, an athlete, and a saint. And you've caught him masturbating. <laughs> oh, what is he doing with his hand? Uh, so what, what will you do after stumbling upon your brother masturbating? Are you going to relieve yourself in secret, or, Pete. or <laughs> use the magic notebook to seduce your brother? So, re okay, all right. So, by a show of hands, are you going to relieve yourself using your hands in secret? Raise your hand. Wow, no one cares for that. So, all right, okay. So, I guess we're just going to use the magic notebook. All right. So. So you and your brother uh, get it on. Koki comes back after getting drunk one night, uh, and he confesses that he likes Akira in an incestuous manner. And the two have sex. Uh, Koki, I forgot to tell you this, he actually had a fiance. Good job, you guys. <laughs> he leaves her, and Akira and his brother live together. Also, they're still brothers, so you guys. <laughs> Good job, you guys. Uh, <laughs> all right. So actually, most of the gameplay of uh, these Otome boys love games uh, typically goes like that, where you have to just uh, choose dialogue options. And most of the time, like in Choose Your Own Adventures, uh, just the weirdest results happen. Like if you make a left turn, you'll die, right? Uh, uh, and I'll, I'll show you some of the alternate uh, endings that uh, after, after we're done with this panel, but um, uh, they're not always pleasant. And, uh, and so I was trying to find any game that at least differed from that, you know, just wasn't a choose your own adventure game. And uh, thankfully, I actually found uh, a Miracle Noten spin off game, uh, which has you typing in Japanese. So, actually, actually, so you're still 
you're still choosing dialogue options, but now you have to actually physically type the response in, so you feel a little bit more responsible. It's, a, it's like com combining typing of the dead with, uh, with porn. <laughs> uh, so let's see some of the gameplay. That is the notebook, by the way. Actually, so this is actually what helped me learn how to type in Japanese. <laughs> I'm, I'm not kidding. This is, this is, I'm not ashamed to admit it. Clearly not. I just told you guys. Uh, so yeah, so, that, so this is essentially the game, and uh, after doing well enough, you get rewarded with porn. Also, uh, the notebook, in, in Miracle Noten 2, actually, uh, the notebook becomes a romance interest where you can actually wish him to turn into a human uh, and have sex with him, so. And he's hot, so. <laughs> uh, and so there's actually a lot of Otome games out there, uh, and some of them actually have spawned, uh, have sort of gone into this transmedia zone where they've actually crossed into the mainstream, or I guess the mainstream of uh, Japan. So this is a trailer for a series called Dramatical Murder. I don't know what that means, but... <laughs> but Let's take a look. Uh, I think this just aired, uh, this just started in Japan, and uh, you can actually stream it on Crunchyroll right now. I mean, that looks pretty cool, right? I don't know what was going on, but, but it looks pretty cool. Um, and I, actually, just by watching that, you would, I don't think you would have any sense that it was a boys' love product at all. Um, and so, yeah, it's Dramatical Murder, set in the near future on the fictional Japanese island of Mido, Midorijima. Aoba Seragaki works at a store named Junk Shop, hoping to live a simple life. But when he plays the popular cyber game Rhyme, his piece his peaceful life ends. Uh, and so, just based on that synopsis, you really wouldn't have any idea like, where its origins are. Uh, but it was, it was a boys love game, actually. So yeah, this is, so, <laughs> these twins are hot. Uh, <laughs> Uh, and so actually, uh, in Japan, they're actually starting to adapt a lot of these boys love products into mainstream, uh, uh, into, into mainstream series. Um, another example of that would be um, uh, Gaku and Heaven, which is a, a boys love uh, game. Let's see if my internet's good enough to play this. It might not. But... Yeah, Gaku in Heaven, it's about uh, Keita Ito, who receives a letter of admission uh, uh, to a prestigious all-boys school. And although he doubts his abilities, he's picked by Niwa, the president of the student council. And from then on, he is warmly welcomed by everyone to BL Academy. <laughs> yeah, you, you figured out what was going to happen. Uh, but yeah, that actually, that also turned into a mainstream anime series, which you can uh, pick up on DVD. Um, and so yeah, in Japan, there's actually uh, a rather thriving market of boys love games that even come out on console. So uh, we have uh, um, 
Uh, we have the Gakuen Heaven game on Ripe for PSP. Uh, and most of them end up on PlayStation products. Uh, so, uh, you know, if, you, if you're into this stuff, you know, that's probably the console of choice that you should pick. Um, and actually, a few of these games have made their way stateside as well. So uh, the f I think uh, the first one that ever came out here is uh, Enzai, Falsely Accused, which is set in a post-revolutionary France uh, in the 19th century. Guy's a young boy uh, from a poor family, gets caught stealing candy, and he gets accused uh, and convicted of murdering a man that he never met. Uh, and so he has to survive in prison uh, and try to somehow uh, prove his innocence. Uh, and of course, this, this happens along the way. <laughs> it's prison. Oh, no, spoilers. Go back. Uh, so the, another game that's available, Absolute Obedience, set in a post-World War II. Uh, West Germany. Uh, the player takes the role of either Kia or Louise, one of two members of a secret agency assigned to seducing specific targets, from members of the KGB <laughs> to aspiring soccer players. <laughs> Not sure, sure, they'll, they'll do it. They'll, uh, and so yeah, uh, you spend a lot of time doing this, so. Uh, so, so what's the future of the boys love market? Uh, so. In Japan, it actually makes about, uh, just in game sales alone, it makes about $20 million uh, a year. But in the US, actually, so these two games did come out, but they're actually, they haven't, there haven't been any releases ever since, uh, in spite of the fact that the, the market is growing in Japan. And for the most part, it's, uh, it's been attributed to piracy. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not going to give you the resources, but you guys are smart. Uh, you can probably figure out a way to download a lot of these games illegally. Uh, uh, you know, but short of just flying out to Japan, uh, you're pretty much not going to be able to buy them anymore. Um, and as much as I love these boys love games, I did want to talk about a few of the, the problems. So I'm sure a, a lot of you said that you're familiar with Yaoi, so I think uh, we all know that like, Yaoi is a fantasy. It is essentially porn in many ways. Uh, some of the problems that, that these games and the genre has to, you know, diminish female characters. So usually these worlds don't have women for some reason. It's just men that are just chasing other men. And uh, narratively, they usually don't have any explanation <laughs> as to why there are no women around. Or, or in a lot of instances, in early Yaoi, uh, female characters would just get killed off like instantly, <laughs> like in, the, in like the first few pages. And then there's, OK, no more women. Now you, now you can be gay. Um, uh, also, gay equality. Uh, so homosexual characters in Yaoi are really empowered. You know, they're free to make uh, you know, their own decisions. And uh, there's very rarely any stigma associated with being game in these uh, in these stories. Uh, sometimes it might be like playful. Uh, uh, Hisako Miyoshi, who uh, works for Libre Publishing, said that earlier Yaoi focused more on the homosexual way of life from a realistic portrayal, uh, but now it's becoming just quote unquote simply for entertainment. Uh, and I think a problem with this is that uh, it also just doesn't reflect how gays are actually treated in Japan. Uh, there's a really big uphill battle that they face uh, there. Uh, I, I, know, I know from here, you know, based on this panel, it might seem like uh, you know, they might be even more progressive than in the States. But actually, the, the opposite is true. Uh, and I think the, the, a real big problem with the genre is uh, there's a lot of rape, uh, uh, just physical rape, uh, but also just a lot of the relationships in these uh, series do have non-consensual uh, relationships that evolve into uh, so something that's considered consensual. Uh, a lot of the stories involve just like trying to convince the guy that he really wants to, wants it, uh, and that that's hot for some people, you know, especially in like in a pornographic setting. But you know, just need to be aware of that. Uh, so uh, a lot of the games that I've presented today are just what I would put under the like banner of of Yaoi and Shonen Ai. Uh, but there are subgenres uh, within them uh, that don't have as many commercial pro products out there. Uh, so Bara is a, is a subsection which uh, I had to add last night, thank you. Uh, <laughs> uh, and Bara is actually typically created uh, by and for gay men. Uh, Bara typically features more complex relationships uh, where the idea of seme and uke isn't necessarily uh, a focus. And uh, it's more likely to show characters who are hairy and very muscular or have a few excess pounds. Uh, 
So this would be an example of Bara. There's less pretty, uh, <laughs> but that's sort of that's sort of the point. Um, there are also Bara games out there, but not commercially. So I, I really struggle to find any commercially available Bara games. Uh, but you can find Flash games and like P, uh, just like fan created P, uh, PC games, uh, like whatever the hell this is. I, I don't know what's going on here. <laughs> it looks like uh, an RPG. Uh, and I don't know if you're fighting that furry monster or if you're seducing him or if you're doing both, but <laughs> that's, a, that's a thing. Uh, another thing I wanted to quickly address uh, is Yuri, Girls Love. Uh, it's, it also is a thing that exists, uh, had, has its roots uh, with lesbian literature. Um, unfortunately, once again, they're just, uh, I wasn't able to really find any commercially available Yuri games, uh, you know, g games that involve girls on girls in a romantic manner, not uh, strictly <laughs> uh, like for male, uh, like pornographic consumption. Uh, but yeah, that's an idea of what to expect. Um, and so yeah, that's, uh, that's the end of my panel. So if you guys have any questions, uh, now is the time. Or we can just play that game again. <laughs> <laughs> Or if you don't have questions, you can share your yaoi stories to me. <laughs> or, you know, we can all just be shy. Okay, so let's, uh, we'll, look, we'll flip through some of the panels that you guys missed uh, earlier. Uh, let's see. Okay, so there's your brother. Uh, so that's uh, him relieving himself. So what happens after that? Um, so after he uh, he orgasms, apparently his brother was right there, uh, and so <laughs> Akira runs away. His notebook suggests that Akira should have sex with him in order to c in, uh, have sex with his brother to confirm whether his brother likes him or not, <laughs> which is that's that's logic for you, yes. <laughs> Besides, if you're listening to a magical notebook, I think in general you should listen to what he says. It's a, it's a magical notebook. Uh, and so, what would you do? Yes or no way. Uh, if you say yes, uh, same thing happens. Uh, if you say no, for some reason you get violently gangbanged. <laughs> wow. There's, there, uh, yeah, I had to block a lot of this just because there was a... <laughs> There's a, there, was, there was a lot going on there. Uh, uh, well, <laughs> I, I, really, I, I don't know. It, he's like, oh no, I can't get my brother. Let me walk in the park and then bam. Just, <laughs> just a really violent rape scene. Uh, so I guess that's, that's one way of ending the panel. <laughs> All right, so any other questions? Uh, otherwise, I can. Oh, uh, yeah, so, I'm curious about what the uh, gender balance of authors of Yoi is like. Uh, so it's mostly uh, female writers and female artists. Uh, I would say in Japan, it's almost exclusively female. Uh, there are some uh, people internationally that 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 are men uh, that will draw uh, in that in in this style. Uh, maybe not Bara or uh, any of the alternatives, uh, but it's really mostly women. Uh, there's very few, like I can't, I can't actually think of a single <laughs> male yaoi artist, uh, professional artist at the very least. Yeah. Uh, back there in blue. Me? Yep. A lot of these games are in Japanese. Um, do you actually speak Japanese, or do you use a translator tool, or do you use fan translation? So, uh, so actually, yeah. Uh, what I do is uh, usually every time I go to Japan, um, I go to uh, the p neighborhoods where they sell this kind of stuff. Uh, if you're Ever in Ikebukuro uh, in Tokyo, uh, there's an <coughs> area called Oto uh, Otome Way, uh, which is just filled with boys' love stuff. It's sort of magical. It's sort of surreal as well, where you're <laughs> where you're, you're walking down the street and there's just like just everywhere there's just posters of like guy like animated guys like hugging each other and holding hands. It's it's sort of wonderful. And and once in a while you see like a cute guy walking down the street too, and you're like you, you wink at him and he just like runs away. Uh, <laughs> but. But yeah, so I usually pick those up. Uh, I, I'm not super fluent in Japanese. I find it easier to understand uh, and than to speak it. So sort of absorbing the material uh, helps. Uh, what I do try to find, uh, if there's guides available online, there are some like fan translations that you can you can find. Uh, other times there's just um, 
uh, guides that just give you like which choice you have to make in order to find which ending, uh, or I just like map it out myself. So it's like, oh, you know, in order to get ending number seven, I have to do like A, 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 B, 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 A, A, or something like that. Um, and sometimes, you know, I'm just like, I just want to see the naked boy, so uh, I'll, I'll admit it. I'll just hit the like skip button on the dialogue scenes and uh, <laughs> and just try to like rush my way to unlocking the 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 H scenes, uh, the hentai scenes. Uh, uh, and yeah, Unfor I, I learned a lot of really like useless Japanese out of these games. <laughs> um, I'm sure if you've watched any Japanese porn, you'll, you'll know all the lingo, so. Um, I don't know if that actually answered your question. There are some, there are some fan translations out there, some, some fan patches, uh, but for the most part, you sort of have to just go into it. Uh, all the way in the back in black. Mm -hmm. and, and whatnot, they always kind of like ended badly for the gay characters. It was always kind of like, you know, uh, you know, if you're gay, you're going to get beaten up and killed or raped or something like that. Uh, has that been improving? Or? Uh, well, I mean, in, in these games, because of the choose your own adventure like framework that they're in, um, they... Yeah, there's a lot of negative endings, but even in something like Enzai, where you're s stuck in jail and you're trying to get out, there are there are good endings. They're they're hard to find. Uh, so in one ending, he like falls in love with his lawyer. His lawyer manages to uh, prove his innocence, and then the uh, they discover like who framed him, uh, get the warden to like go to jail, and then they get married and live happily ever after. So like, you know, that's hard to get, but it's it's possible. I think. Uh, in most games, uh, it, it does typically follow uh, that kind of uh, that range where uh, a lot of these games are very violent. Uh, so you know, uh, actually, I feel like they're increasingly violent uh, nowadays. Uh, uh, so uh, I, I would say that it hasn't changed, but the possibility of good things happening is always readily available in in all these games. Uh, in the hat. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, it's still it's still that in Japan. Uh, uh, being out in Japan, being publicly out in Japan, is still much more frowned upon than it is uh, here. And obviously, it's different in um, metropolitan areas like Tokyo. But uh, even then, I still think. Uh, Japan has a long way to go in terms of catching up to where we are in the States, you know? I don't think there's going to be a Gamer X in Japan anytime soon, you know? So, so that's the sad truth. I would love to see some actual boys wear actual yaoi outfits, and then I can actually ask them out. Uh, but <laughs> but, but uh, unfortunately, that doesn't seem to be happening anytime soon. So, so anything else? Otherwise, uh, you guys are free to go and enjoy the rest of your Sunday. So. Thank you so much for attending. Uh, thank you for coming out.